Okay, and welcome back students who are taking math for business and finance and math applications. And we're going through the theory videos for chapter 21, stocks, bonds, and mutual funds. And as always, if you don't understand something, pause, watch the video again. And if you still don't understand, you know, telephone and speak with an instructor. Um, a couple of the other instructors here besides myself, you know, we all invest in, uh, you know, stocks and uh, mutual funds um, and there's a reason why we don't invest so much in bonds but I'll get into that when we cover the bonds aspect of it okay so um, right now um, you know this video is going to start with stocks and however many videos it takes to cover stocks will be however many it takes and then I'll start a new video uh, for bonds okay All right so let me see here uh, I put this information on you know the slide and again I'm going to be adding and giving you additional information that is not in the textbook, um, but I think that's kind of pertinent and gives you a little bit more well-rounded uh, view of an understanding and basis for uh, what stocks are and how they work and stuff like that. Anyway, um, from reading the textbook, all right, you know that there is, you know, the mo everybody knows about common stock, okay? You know, if you go out and you buy stock, generally you're buying common stock, you know. Uh, if you went out and bought Microsoft or Google, right? Um, you know that's what you're buying. Oh, and by the way, um, when it comes to the name of a stock, okay, like here I just write, wrote MSFT. That's the what's called the ticker symbol. Okay, uh, it's sort of an abbreviation, or and it, you can't necessarily just automatically like Google is G O O G. And you kind of like say, all right, you know, that's Google. You recognize that. And Microsoft is MSFT. And they can be either three or four digits long. Sometimes uh, you might see, um, like, uh, I forget, Berkshire Hathaway, which is Warren Buffett stock, I believe is B, uh, Berkshire, B-R, Berkshire, B-R-S-K, B-R-S-K, I believe it is. And then there's a dot and then maybe you might have an a okay after it so you end up with five uh, letters as part of the ticker symbol that's because they sell more than one uh, type of stock for that particular uh, company berkshire hathaway by the way and uh warren buffett's company right you know the price of that stock is i believe like hundred and twenty thousand dollars per share okay and so therefore, um, it's very difficult for anybody to buy stock. Um, now, they went and they created a, a separate fund, and that's why you have this dot A. And I'm not sure what the price of it is. I mean, so don't quote me on these prices. But I know that because they created the A uh, share, that like the price of those shares is only like thirty thousand dollars or so. I mean, I don't know. Um, I didn't look it up. This is just something that's coming out of my head. But I wanted you to understand that. Um, whatever the ticker symbol is for Berkshire, okay, the Berkshire, that would be the ticker symbol, and that's, you know, that I'm just saying is $120,000 a share. And then they created another one, which it's only $30,000 a share, okay, that's Berkshire A, okay. So ticker symbols are how we look up stocks for a particular company. Um, they're generally three or four uh, letters long. They don't. They the they try to give an indication as to the name of the company, but it's not always that easy. Okay, like I was just showing you, Berkshire Hathaway, I believe is B R S K, right? And that might you might recognize that as Berkshire, but um, you're certainly not Hathaway. Okay, and then there's you know others that. Uh, you, you just wouldn't recognize whatsoever, okay? Uh, so you can't just rely upon the ticker symbol. You usually look up the name of the company, and then you'll see uh, symbols, all right? And, and I'll get into that just a, a couple, in the next slide or so. You'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. But anyway, we all recognize that stock. When we talk about it, we all, most often we're talking about common stock, and that's what the general public can buy. Okay, so if you're going to invest and you call up a stockbroker, you're most likely going to buy common stock. However, there is something called preferred stock. Now, preferred stock is exactly what it means. It's preferred. Okay, so 
if you have common here, okay, preferred stock actually comes before it, okay, and it's preferred. It's given as, as a uh, this. It's sold to special, for lack of a better word, insiders. They get a preferred position in the company. It's not to say you can't buy preferred stock. I mean, you can buy preferred stock. Um, it's a public stock. It's not, you know, only for insiders. However, it, it does have a preferred position over common stock. And you'll see what I mean when we uh, talk about stock dividends and things like that. Um, and it has a preferred position over common, meaning things that happen as far as dividends are concerned, they go to that preferred position first and then common. All right. All right, and we'll, you'll see more, uh, you'll understand that a little bit more as we move on, okay? Um, just realize that there is a preferred stock, and that comes before the common stock, even though when we talk about stock, we, we view them or think of them in this, this order, preferred actually comes before common, right? And then there's something that's called treasury stock. Treasury stock is when a company buys back its stock, okay? So... Um, let's say, uh, and I'm just going to make up, use Microsoft as an example. Okay, Microsoft um, has, and I'm just going to make up a number here. Let's say 500,000 shares. That's available for people to buy. Okay, since it's common stock. Right, so people buy the the common stock, but if micro, Microsoft wants to uh, buy back some of their stock in order to create less of a supply okay if there's less of a supply and people still want that stock it's going to drive the price up right well if microsoft wants to they can buy back some of that stock because anybody who wants to sell their stock well why can't microsoft buy it back okay i mean stock is created in order to um gain for the the company to, to get capital okay I mean, when they first start out, only the owners um, invest their capital in the business. But as the business grows, generally, they need additional funding. And that's why they sell stock in the company in order to get that funding. Okay, Meaning, um, if it's, let's say it's $100 a share, right, and somebody buys 100 shares, right, that's $10,000 that the company, right, now has. Okay. in return for the piece of paper that says stock, right? Um, that's the claim against, you know, that's the investment in that particular business. So now the, the, uh, the company has the $10,000. Okay. So then they can use it for whatever they want, you know, to, you know, build a new building and upgrade equipment or, or whatever have you. Now, if the company is profitable, they may, you know, and they're expanding and you know, they're doing well, well, maybe they might want to drive the price up. So they'll say, okay, I want to buy this. You know, the company will say, I want to buy the stock back. Because remember, out of this 500,000 shares, there's going to be some people who want to sell. Okay. And if they decide to sell, well, Microsoft can, can buy that back. Okay. And take it off the market. Now it's called treasury stock. Now here's the thing about treasury stock. Even though the company, you know, has it, okay. Now let's say they buy back. Um, let's just uh, erase some of this here. Let's say they buy back a um, hundred thousand of those five hundred thousand shares of Treasury stock. Okay. Well, it's still stock. Okay. But, and let, let to just to make the picture a little bit more complete, maybe say there's fifty thousand shares of preferred. So they buy back 100,000 shares of that treasury stock, meaning now the company, you know, Microsoft holds that paper and it's treasury stock. But notice, and of course, that was cash that went out, you know, to those investors, um, you know, who sold that stock, right? So that cash was returned to those investors. But that treasury stock sort of like just sits there. It doesn't immediately, what's what we call retired, okay? They don't retire the stock immediately. If they retire the stock, 
then those shares no longer exist. Okay. Right. So, and that means the common stock here is not, instead of being 500,000 is only going to be 400,000 because they bought back 100,000 shares of it. So when they buy that back, they have 100,000 shares of, of treasury stock, then they have a choice. They can either keep it, okay, they can keep it and resell it, or they can just retire it, meaning take it completely off the market, okay? So the you know, Microsoft can make that choice as to what they want to do with the treasury stock, okay? So that's kind of... Um, uh, you know, the three different types of stocks that y you'll find. And if you're looking at an annual report of a, of a company, you know, you'll, you know, you'll see, it, you'll definitely see common stock. Uh, you may or may not see preferred and less likely, but uh, still possible for you to see the, the treasury stock. Okay. Right now, when it comes to stock, as a matter of fact, no, you know, I'm going to stop here. All right. After that explanation of these three, I'm going to stop here and because uh, the video is like almost 12 minutes long and I don't want to get into the new issue of, you know, a new concept here of issued, authorized, and outstanding. I'll do that in the next video. Okay, so I'll see you then.